Hi everyone, Sammy here. Welcome back to another video and today we're going to do a first impression. I can't do a review, but I promised the guys from Viltrox to uh, show this uh, lens on my channel. Uh, I actually reached out to them because I really, I was really interested in uh, testing this lens. This is the Viltrox 27 1.2 Pro. I'm actually very busy at the moment because I'm preparing for a, a shoot, uh, a production that's going to cost me a lot of my time. So there won't be any uploads in August and September besides this video, if it gets done in time, let's see. This lens is already out or reviews are already on YouTube. And I'm currently in the process of uh, rigging up my Fujifilm XS20 to be ready to shoot commercial jobs. If you want to see my rig, I'm going to show it to you and we can use the Viltrox to film me building my rig. Maybe for, filmmak for your filmmakers out there, this could be interesting. So let's give David my Viltrox. So David is now filming me on the Viltrox 27 1.2 at 1.2. And for the first clip, he was using his uh, 33 mm 1.4 from Fujifilm. Uh, so you can see how this compares. So he's using the X-T4. I have the X XS20, I just updated the firmware and we can also do some autofocus test once my rig is uh, set up. First question you might have, why not get the X-H2S for filmmaking? Why did I get the XS20? And the whole reason is that I shoot mostly YouTube videos. I don't really shoot that many commercial jobs anymore because I don't need to. But uh, recently I got uh, asked to do a bigger project where I definitely need more security, redundancy, so I have to record on multiple uh, media types. So that's why I need a rig. First thing I bought was this uh, small rig cage here, which uh, I also recommend if you only use the camera for photography because it uh, feels very nice. Uh, I also bought this handle here from small rig. I have a monitor uh, mount also from small rig. It's not sponsored by them. Uh, lens is the Sigma 18 to 50. It's a very good uh, run and gun lens. I will start with the grip. Um, this is, um, I have a tilter wooden hand grip and this extension arm, which I'm going to attach here. This gives me some stability when filming handheld. Next accessory is very, very important. And that is uh, the micro HDMI to full HDMI adapter. Hast du noch Sachen von... Ich suche meine... Hä? Ist es hier mit drin? Ah, ist es hier mit drin? I was looking for this small rig uh, micro HDMI to full HDMI adapter. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit. Today is a little awkward because... So Dan was going with me on the shoot and I was uh, showing him my, my rig today. So now he's waiting for me because I have to make this video. <laughs> okay, so this is important because micro HDMI is a, is a pain to work with and very fragile. So what you need to do is you have to buy um, an HDMI uh, clamp to hold the HDMI, HDMI cable stable because um, yeah, micro HDMI is not very reliable and it can break easily. So you have to have something to secure the, the, the cable. And while I do that, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Viltrox lens. So I already tested it for, for photography and it's, it's extremely sharp, wide open. Almost, no, it's not too sharp. It's clin clinical sharp and it's very uh, comparable to Fujifilm's um, new, you know, 18, 1.4, 23, 1.4, 33, 1.4. I would compare it to these lenses. Um, and it's funny because I watched some reviews uh, where they did more comprehensive tests. And uh, if you stop this lens down to 5.6, that's the sweet spot. And f8, there's already some diffraction. So it's a lens that is made for shooting wide open. Uh, 40 millimeter fu uh, full frame equivalent. It's my favorite focal length at the moment. What should I Yeah, this is a heavy and big lens, but. On an X-H1 or X-T4 or even on the X-S20 with a cage, it's not, for me, it doesn't feel that big. The, the weight and size is justified because the performance is so good. You might argue that the bokeh, the background blur, 
is not um, has maybe not so much character but if you want a modern lens that looks clean good contrast then um, it's a it's a workhorse lens I would use it to shoot professionally but for my own photography I might prefer a lens with a little bit more character but the images so far has yeah there's they came out very well so this is how it looks like you have to have this clamp here to secure your HDMI cable and then uh, I'm going to record on an SSD drive this is the SanDisk Extreme Pro and I have this holder here from Smallrig and this goes on top of this cage and then I um, I screwed on the uh, HDMI adapter here onto the SSD holder because um, then I can insert the HDMI cable and then tighten it here and now I can put um, plug in the full HDMI cable and this is going to sit securely and not going to come off so now we need the monitor and this is also something I bought for the shoot that is coming next week uh, it's a Blackmagic Video Assist 12G 5 inch. Um, it can record 4K, 60, ProRes, uh, Blackmagic RAW. And the reason why I got this and not, let's say, the uh, Atomos Ninja Blade, Ninja V, I think it's the popular recorder everyone is using. Um, the reason is I prefer the color accuracy of Blackmagic monitors. And what's nice is I can record on SD cards. I don't need to plug in SSD drives. And I can record on uh, SD drives using USB-C. And then, so this is the rig so far. Oh, let's do the microphone. Uh, I have uh, a Sennheiser, Sennheiser MKE 440. This is my main YouTube vlogging lens. I love it. And this could be here, or we could also use a uh, Delmos mic here, which is this uh, sunken mic and then this uh, XLR adapter I also bought. It came, uh, came in yesterday. And that's uh, the analog version. There's also a version for Fujifilm. So you, it commun can communicate with the camera via the hot shoe. But because I, I can't use the hot shoe anymore, I, have to, I had to buy the analog version, which runs on uh, batteries. But this could be your XLR audio handheld rig. And then, because I have my strap here on the side, I can put it around my neck. And now I have some added stabili stability. And what's cool about this grip is also I can adjust the orientation. And now I can go and film and look badass. <laughs> okay, we are done. <laughs> Monster rig. In, in reality, you don't really need all this stuff. But for me, it has to do with um, making sure that nothing goes wrong because I'm recording on an SSD and I'm also recording on my single SD slot here for redundancy. I just want to have some uh, safety. Uh, I want to show you something uh, DIY, something I, I made a long time ago for an Atomos recorder. Sun hoods for external recorders or monitors are always very expensive. so. Back in my video uh, production company days, um, I used to use an Atomos recorder, 5 inch. And uh, this is a little sun hood that I made myself out of um, some foam. And it actually fits perfectly onto this Blackmagic recorder. And what's cool about this monitor is, or this recorder, it turns on very fast. I think the Atomos recorder takes a longer, a little bit longer to. to Turn on. <lacht> Wildrox sieht, wird das Video sehen, denken: Hallo, rede über das Objektiv. Die schicken das so einfach und was soll man machen? Es gibt keinen Vertrag, gar nichts. So, this is how it looks with the sun hood on. And it's nice because my, my eyes or my head is like right inside when I film outside. So, um, it does help. So, uh, we are now going to uh, use the Wildrox on this setup. And I'm going to film, I don't know, demo or something here with autofocus. And then you can see how it performs as a video lens. Uh, maybe we compare it to uh, David's... Oh, I have it here. His uh, 33 1.4.
because I think this is uh, a lens that is pretty close to the Viltrox. Okay, I forgot to show you something else. Uh, another important accessory is this. Uh, what do you call this? Sunshade, lens flare shade. I'm not a fan of matte boxes because they need time to set up. Uh, you need time to set them up, and then you can't really change lenses quickly, and you need, uh, you know, rods and stuff. So this one here, I hope we can still put it onto the same position. Um, this will go onto my handle. You see this here? Uh, there's a cold shoe, and this is where I put it and tighten it. Now I can still hold it, and then I have show the front. I have uh, a little bit of a sunshade that I can adjust because when I use ND filters, I can't use the lens hood anymore, which is very big on this lens. Wait here, wait here. Uh, so this is the lens hood for this lens, and you see it's you know a little big, but it works. But for this setup, I can't use it. That's why I need this one. Now, if you're thinking this is too much gear talk, let's talk more about the art of photography and you want to sell all your camera gear because you are fed up with all this camera gear talk, then I know just the place where you can do that. It's NPB, the place to buy and sell used camera gear. I always buy my secondhand camera gear from NPB. I think it's just a responsible thing to do. Um, yes, I bought this camera brand new but it's the first time since 2017 that I bought a camera brand new. Um, but I try as much as I can to buy secondhand. And I sell a lot of my stuff also to MPB, which is very easy because you can just fill out a form, find the equipment you want to sell and you get a quote. And then I think they even pick it up for you in the US. I don't know about Europe. And then you can get uh, paid right away after sending in your equipment or you can uh, use that uh, money to buy something else, to fund a different system, maybe. And then whenever you do want to get a new system or try something new, then MPB. <laughs> okay, I'm now going to film in uh, F1.2, autofocus, A AFC, uh, AF tracking speed on plus one, I think. I will show you some text here. It also has face tracking on, no eye tracking, just face. Um, yeah, this is how it looks. Uh, F log 2, 10 bit 422. Let's go closer here. So, this is the look of 1.2. And I updated the, the firmware to whatever is the current firmware version. Uh, and I think it looks great. This has a very cinematic, professional. Uh, look to it. <laughs> now let's go to the boat. Go back to Delma. Yeah. Oh yeah, aperture ring. I should talk a little bit about the aperture ring. Um, the aperture ring, I don't know if you can see it here. Um, it has uh, third stops and it's super smooth, but it does click in, but you barely feel it. It's, it feels almost like a declicked aperture ring. Reminds me a little bit of Sony lenses, but uh, I don't mind it. I like it. I'm going to stop down to F4 so you can see the bokeh at F4. So this is how F4 looks like. <laughs> uh oh copyrighted music we have to hurry <laughs> yeah i can't smell <laughs> now i switch to the 33 uh, 1.4 from fujifilm uh, because uh, my ND filter didn't fit onto uh, David's lens, I had to use his ND filter. It's not strong enough, so I, uh, I'm still on, at 1.4, but uh, the shutter speed is higher now. But it should give you an idea about the look. So this is how 33mm 1.4 looks like. And then you can compare it to uh, the Viltrox 27 1.2 and autofocus looks good or oh, looks very good hello <laughs> uh, 
Face. Oh, oh, now you challenged the camera. So, yeah, I mean, both both lenses look look good. I, I I have a hard time seeing a difference, but I'm only seeing the ungraded uh, footage here. How, mu how much is the 33F 1.4? 600? 800? 700. 750? I, I actually don't know how much the Viltrox cost, but my guess would be 700, 600 maybe. But if it's under 800, I think it's definitely uh, worth it. So Dema just told me uh, it's 600 euro, 600 dollars. So 600 euro for the Viltrox. To, uh, that's I know I'm biased because I got the lens from Viltrox, but uh, that's a good price because it feels to me like it could be a thousand euro, and I wouldn't question it. It's weather sealed. Um, autofocus on older cameras is sometimes a little jittery, but on the XS20 it's super fast tracking. It works beautifully. Uh, if you're into pixel peeping, the Viltrox is ah, it's so good. And uh, yeah, usually I do long-term reviews, that's what I prefer. But uh, hopefully this gave you a little bit of an idea how the Viltrox performs for video. Uh, I will report back after my shoot. Maybe I do a little, maybe I talk about it if I'm allowed to, I don't know. Yeah, if you have any questions about this rig, about Fujifilm, uh, let me know. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs> you don't need to follow me. Okay.